Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yes, we've got the 2500 out today. And what are we gonna do with this 2500? Oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? Oh boy, oh no. Oh, is that a hard drive? Like an actual, that is a hard drive. And this here is a, uh... oh, ooh. All right, so yes, what we've got here is a DPS uh, personal TBC and a DPS personal animation recorder or PAR card. Now, granted, I don't really have much in need for the time-based corrector, but it is amazing that it's included and it's in such great condition. The seller on eBay, I mean, honestly, for the condition this arrived, it was packaged immensely well, like the best way to do it. And it's like this, I mean, look at this. He's even got like original seals on here. This card looks, I mean, you would almost argue, is this, did he actually, is this never been used? Is this actually the original seal? I don't, I don't know, I, maybe not, but there's like original protector covers on here and it just looks immaculate. All the original cables, they're, I mean, they're still got their standard folds in them. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it is original. I have no idea. All the various adapters and floppies and then, yeah, the hard drive is here. Now the hard drive didn't come with the PAR or the TBC. You did need to actually purchase this yourself. And then yes, the big, big guide and how the heck to use all this. I don't remember how to use it. Um, got to, to be honest, I've never actually used a TBC. I was not into, I wasn't doing big time broadcast stuff. I just never had a need for a time-based corrector. I wasn't importing video. The time-based corrector is mostly for syncing cameras and or video source so that you can um, video capture accurately. And that's one of the things with the PAR is that well, Q, what is a PAR? You just, you just said PAR and maybe most of people don't know what that is. So the personal animation recorder, P-A-R, PAR. And what that allows you to do is have broadcast NTSC or PAL quality type video playback from your Amiga, from this card. And it uses basically motion JPEG. It's a motion JPEG card way back in the day, okay? So all the way back in the Amiga times, they had this card going. And before this, and some of you may know, I do a lot of Lightwave on here. I create a lot of animations, right? When you create an animation on your Amiga, you compile it into an Amiga, like an Anim format, whether it's, you know, four color, 16 color, 32 color, ham, ham eight. And you're limited to the amount of memory in your Amiga, how much graphics processing power your Amiga has. And, you know, if we're lucky, we can play a little, you know, tiny postage stamp video in our Amigas, or we can go full screen, but it's gonna be very low res, maybe 320 by 240 or something. Uh, 4000s that are accelerated, it can obviously play a little faster. But I mean, this is an Amiga 2500 with a 68030 in it. it, it and it's doesn't, there's no AGA chipset in here. So you're not gonna get any of those like high quality ham animations out of this. So how do you get uh, animation out of your Amiga? Or any computer really back then? Well, one of the things you could also do is buy a single frame recorder, which essentially is this fancy VCR that hooks to your computer through a serial cable. Frame by frame, your computer says, I'm displaying this image. And the VCR literally records one of 30 frames that are in a second of that image. So once, and then it goes to your next frame, your next frame, your next frame, your next frame, 30 times to generate one second of video on tape. A very, very tedious process. And of course, prone to issues with the tape quality in your computer, and it was expensive, but that's what you had to do back then. Or you could take your frames, and, and if you were super rich, expose to film, and you could watch them on a projector, right? So a lot of different ways to do it. The PAR really kind of changed everything. The PAR made it so that you could generate frames on your Amiga, have this card crush them down into a file, I'll put it to a television set, and you could watch your animation on TV like you're watching the professionals who are making TV shows do it. Playing back at full 30 frames a second. It did, of course it supported fields for that 60 frames a second look, whatever. It was awesome. And yeah, it used, you needed a lot of hard drive space, okay? So you did have to have a separate dedicated hard drive that plugs directly to the card for this to work. And that's why this includes a hard drive here. I really hope it works. And you have to add special hard drives. So you couldn't just use any hard drive. Hard drive had to maintain a certain amount of speed, okay? If it didn't go fast enough, it wouldn't work. The thing would freak out and crash. So, and you could only play back cleanly for so long. Even with the, the proper spec hard drive, I forget what it was, but I think you got maybe two minutes of continuous playback before the hard drive would have to like recalibrate itself and you get a little glitch on the screen, right? So not 100% perfect, but there's a lot you can do in two minutes, especially if you're editing video. I mean, look how many edits I do in this video every 15 seconds, right? So if you're editing your video, 
you're taking, you, know, you can get, you can hide those little glitches. But my first demo reel, my first demo reel, which I maybe I'll toss up here in the corner. Uh, my first demo reel was was compiled on a par, uh, my Amiga 3000. I borrowed one from work, and I was able to output my uh, my animation, my demo reel, full screen, everything, D, you know, NTSC to a VHS, and it was awesome. Just a regular VHS player, because remember, the par is outputting standard NTSC video. It's no fancy single frame record stuff. It's doing all the grunt work, and put it on VHS, played it, and there you go. You got yourself a demo reel. So I'm gonna try and put it in this 2500, get it up and running, and hopefully remember how to use it, hopefully remember how to install it. I'm glad the manual is here because I'm definitely gonna need it. Okay, so we do need to install the PAR, and as you can see, having a 2000 or 2500 is uh, the only way you wanna go, honestly. And if you look here, I've got lots of slots in this 2500, but I kinda got this little chaos nest going on. It's the Commodore 68030 here, I have this GVP card, which is giving me like an extra eight megs of RAM. It has a hard drive on it. I haven't taken it off. It's not plugged in, it's not spun up. I don't think it actually even works. But I do have plenty of space if I move some stuff, but I may actually need to take this hard drive out because I need, I need those Zorro slots and I'm looking around here and I'm like, oh boy. So maybe I need to remove this out of here and move it over here. I don't know, let's see what happens. So there you go, one old quantum. Pretty sure she's dead. What you can do here is free up some more space by, well, no, wait, I'm sorry. Duh, Q. I'm using the SCSI controller on this card for my, uh, for my Zulu right there. Okay, what I could do, just to make this a little less weird, maybe, I don't know, we'll see here. I mean, ultimately this Zulu, is, since it's all virtual type of hard drive-y stuff, I could make it live elsewhere. Now, before I get too excited and start putting PAR card in there, by the way, I did want to mention the PAR was available for PCs. Uh, it wasn't just Amigas. And uh, there's other software. I, mean, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, like using Amiga Anim format, but you could also use DCTV. DCTV was an option. You could, especially if you had an AJ Amiga, you could almost output, um, actually you really could just output full NTSC 30 frames a second from a, an AJ 4000 using DCTV. Now DCTV wasn't full 16 million color NTSC, the way a PAR is though. So it's, there's still a little bit of a compromise with the DCTV. And of course, you know, having to really need an AGA Amiga to get the full quality. So there's a mess of BNC, oh gosh. Oh, there's a mess of BNC cables and adapters. Adapters are cool. So unfortunately I don't have a readily available um, NTSC monitor. Well Q, what about the, the 1080 behind you on the Amiga 500? True, I could use that, but it's all plugged in over there. What I do have is a crappy little nine inch Chinesium display that actually has BNC input, which is exactly the wrong thing to look at beautiful PAR output on. But you know what, I'm working with what I got here, folks. But also that the PAR outputs S-Video. So it outputs S-Video, it outputs separate, separated chroma luminance, right? And then it has a composite output. So the composite output's gonna be the worst, but it is composite over BNC. I wish I had an S-Video cable. I know, I'm, I'm, this is, how poorly prepared is this channel? It always, poorly prepared, underproduced. I know, look, I wanted, I wanted to just, show you guys the par. It's more about importing the frames and actually seeing it play back in real time. That's such a treat. I mean, if this works, I don't know if this is even gonna work. Does this 2500 even work? Should I go back and look at the last video with the 2500 and see if this was even working when I turned it off? Okay, so let's get this hard drive ripped open. Ooh, yes. The stickies, oh, the stickies. Oh, by the way, I was looking at the back of the par card, TBC. It looked pretty grungy, so I don't, these are definitely, these definitely has, have been used. I mean, here we are just assuming this hard drive works. Now, the interesting thing is, man, this is really, look at this, a Fujitsu, Fujitsu Limited. The date is 2000, you know, only 24 years old. Jumpers on it, I mean, I don't know. The PAR has its own file system. It's gonna take over this drive. So the PAR's ID, I always thought the PAR was scuzzy. Well, that just shows you what I know, right? Okay, it goes on. Oh, I can see someone grilled this off last time. All right, so that goes on there like that. Send that over there, go over there, please. Go ahead and... Find a slot, a slot, find, oh gosh. Oh, oh, it's starting to fall in. Oh, okay, there she goes. Ah, ah, okay, there, we, there it is. Let's see here. Uh, oh, in the socket. And of course we'll secure it. So everything goes flying off the table. There we go. A hard drive, I think this will work, so. I need to, sorry my workbench isn't uh, like immaculate and 
functional like it should be, but you know, again, working with what I got. Oh, I actually did. I pulled out the, I, I, I completely undid the, I did not even, did not even need to undo those screws. Oh, if Dr. Chris is watching this. He's going to be, hopefully he can't see the mistakes I'm making. Oh boy. If he was watching this. Q, why are you taking that apart? Okay. Let me get in here with this. All right. Knowing me, that's probably the only screw I put in it. <laughs> I love me sometimes. I can't screw a hard drive into that. How am I going to do that? Those are little, those are little nuts. Who designed something like this? What is, I mean, the floppy drive has little screws going on the bottom. That makes sense. What was on here? I mean, these, these are these are like rubber isolators, right? So are these specifically for hard drives? These little rubber booty feet? Is that what these are for? To help the hard drive not resonate or something? Learn, goddammit. Oh, look at that. What do they do? They actually, they actually kind of, they screw in there. Huh, okay. Aha, look at that. Where's the fourth one? Huh, I don't know. Okay, now we've got PAR plugged in, in a slot. We've got GVP plugged in. She isn't really secured with screws. So let me, uh, let's see if we can free remedy that real fast here. Okay, so I need to uh, get a display and stuff, a panel and, and all that good stuff. Keyboard. All right, so a lot's happened since you last saw this. Yes, I couldn't do you guys wrong. It was a little bit more work than I wanted it to be, but hey, you know what? You guys are worth it. So let's first cross your fingers when I turn on, nothing smokes. I've checked everything here. Everything seems okay. I don't know. Let's find out. No blue screen, hard drive lights flickering. These are all good things. Flickety flick flick. And yes, this has got the uh, fan stock 2000, 2500 power supply fan in it still. But you should be seeing a picture over here if this monitor is on. It's probably not on. Okay, there it is. Can you guys see everything? It's kind of, I mean, I'm sorry if it's off screen. I know I'm trying to get the whole super widescreen mode here. I want you to be able to see everything though. Pop this in. Hope my efforts for cleaning the 2500's floppy drive have paid off. Disc sounds a little crunchy, but is working. Usually it'll tell you, this will create a drawer. No, it's not. It's just gonna dump it all in there. How many times have you purchased someone else's Amiga and then you open up the hard drive and yeah, all the programs are just installed into the partition like this, just a big mess. I, I hear the sound of a hard drive. Now remember, my other hard drive is the Zulu SCSI. So if I'm hearing a hard drive, it must be this Fujitsu. And what's, we know it's a really good sign. It's not whining like a jet airplane. So that's a great sign actually. Set that aside over here someplace, way over here. I'm, yeah, I don't like putting floppies near monitors, right? Although people had monitors on top of their Amigas forever with floppies sitting on top. And I don't know, it never seemed to be a problem. All right, so stop blabbing Q. Uh, let's go and run that PAR software which should just be sitting out in the middle. There it is, that's so great. That looks so pretty. Look at all this just stuff everywhere. And no, I'm not gonna do auto arrange because then it'll dump it where I don't want it. So run the PAR. Ooh, look at this interface. I sort of remember this. I'm sure it's gonna be like, you need something. Uh-oh. Oh, there's stuff on this PAR drive. Wait, is there? Okay, so whoever had this PAR before me, it looks like they had a toaster. So they may have already taken stuff? Let's see, let's go into video. All right, so, oh, right here, play. Look at that, Be beautiful, isn't it? No. Why can't I see? Is it something as simple as I'm plugged into the wrong thing? Now, it did say that the composite video was one down from the S video. Let me, let me check this out. All right, so about 20 minutes later, fumbling around with the uh, 1080 and making sure the power is plugged into the right thing, I don't know what's going on. I tried the switches in the back of the 1080. It has a composite video input, but it just, it won't show a picture. So I had to drag out my Chinesium display and guess what? It shows a picture, look at that. So let's go ahead and click play. In fact, we're gonna put this on loop so we can give it a look-see and we'll see uh, hopefully 30 frames per second, full DTS, DTS, full NTSC animation playing here on this crappy Chinesium LCD panel. Whoa, look at that. Whoa, look at that, how smooth and awesome that is. See, that's great, see that? That is full 16 million color, amazing NTSC 30 FPS video playing back in your old 2500. There's barely any compression artifacts. I mean, this monitor sucks, this little Chinesium thing, but yeah, this is, uh, that's, this is what you paid for. You wanted to be able to have it look just like TV, like Sequest and Babylon 5. We wanted it to all look just like that. That's exactly what this gave you. 
It really does a cool job. That's fun. What else we got in here? Video test. I guess that's the only video that's on here. So if you go to stills, what happens? Oh yeah, there you go, stills. Video toaster logo. You see how fast it is too? Like if you go back to the video folder, those are test signals. Okay, well, that's terrible. So yeah, like that's, that's how quick that is. And I think you can even scrub. Yeah, you can even scrub the video guys. Look at that, full VCR. Now when I do this, you can hear the hard drive going chucka 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 chucka. Yeah, see like if you're working on animation and you're trying to edit your animation and, and perfect it, being able to see it like as a final output like this and scrub through it and see where you might need to fix something like does that happen too soon or too late? This is this is just the cool stuff. That's what's so awesome about this. So yeah, that's uh that's what a par card does, all right? A par card. It gives you this awesome video playback system and record as long as you install the TBC alongside it and as you can see that's going to get really tight if I tried to do that. With the TBC, you could then record in 30 frames per second NTSC video, just like just like this. If you were weird, you could actually output from the PAR, have it go back into another PAR, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. But yeah, the interface is, look, it's pretty, pretty simple to understand. And uh, as you can see there, it's just a VCR control. And yeah, it's still, you know, it's not killing the Amiga. I mean, this Amiga is a 68030 at 25 megahertz. It has, you know, eight megs of RAM, five megs available. It only has one mega chip memory, but I mean, this isn't using chip memory. This is using all the fancy chips on the card. So there you go, the PAR card. That's pretty slick. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I need to uh, get this better integrated, you know, button this 2500 up. And I guess I need to find an, an NTSC monitor that's gonna be friendly with this or maybe figure out, maybe you guys can leave in the comments like there's a special thing you need to do with the 1080. I don't know, is there a dial I gotta turn or something? I, I'm not sure. But uh, hey, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Okay, well, I guess you know what I'm going to say next, right? Thanks for watching. You know, appreciate everyone checking this stuff out. I hope uh, I hope this video was okay. I know the camera setup was a little weird, and I'm using a new microphone, so who knows what's going to happen with that. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm done with this video.